When I was little, one of my favorite ever Halloween costumes was when I dressed up like Rainbow Bright. So Rainbow Bright lived in Rainbow Land with her fellow rainbow friends and cute little sprites and her horse Starlight. She brought joy and color into the world and had a star on her cheek and a magic rainbow belt. Loved it, wore that costume all the time. My second favorite was when I dressed up like a Care Bear. I'm pretty sure it was Funshine Bear, the one with the rainbow on her tummy. The Care Bears were awesome because they lived in the land of Carolot and they flew through the air in cloud cars and they used their Care Bear stare to shoot rainbows from their tummies and to make the world a better place. When I see a rainbow, it makes me happy. It fills me with hope and joy. Hello, I'm Pastor Stephanie Christoffels, the pastor for worship and engagement at Bethlehem Lutheran Church in St. Cloud, Minnesota. And I wanna personally welcome you to this online worship opportunity. At Bethlehem, we strive to follow in the way of Jesus and welcoming everyone for who they are, just as they are. No matter how you are feeling, weary, stressed, joyful, rested, or something in between, we trust that God will meet you in this time of worship. As we prepare for our time of worship, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. rainbow, it makes me happy. It fills me with hope and joy. Rainbows remind me that no matter what storm happens in my life, there's promise after the storm. You know, rainbows are especially great when they have glitter, because glitter makes everything better. Several years ago, I came across the most beautiful picture of a rainstorm and a lightning strike in the desert with a rainbow in the background. It mesmerized me because there was so much power and majesty in that image. You had this storm with this lightning, this powerful lightning, but yet this promise with a rainbow shining through. From Genesis chapter 7 through 9. In the 600th year of Noah's life, the rain fell on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. On the very same day, Noah and his family entered the ark, they and every wild animal of every kind. They went into the ark with Noah, two and two of all flesh, in which there was the breath of life. And those that entered, male and female of all flesh, went in as God had commanded. And the Lord shut Noah in. The flood continued for 40 days on the earth, and everything on dry land in whose nostrils was the breath of life died. Only Noah was left, and those that were with him on the ark. In the end of 40 days, Noah opened the window of the ark that he had made and sent out the raven, and it went to and fro until the waters were dried up from the earth. Then he sent out a dove with him, to see if the waters had subsided from the face of the ground. But the dove found no place to set its foot, and it returned to him to the ark. He waited another seven days, and again he sent out the dove from the ark, and the dove came back to him in the evening. And there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. So Noah knew that the waters had subsided from the earth. Then he waited another seven days and sent out the dove, and it did not return to him anymore. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant. In our first reading, we hear this familiar story of Noah's Ark. Noah was a righteous man surrounded by a lot of people who weren't. 
and God decided to flood the world and start over. So Noah built this ark and assembled his family and a pair of each animal, and they remained on the ark until after the 40 days of rain and the many more days of waiting for the water to recede. And after the flood, God promised Noah that he would never again flood the earth and destroy all life. And that as a sign of this promise, God placed a rainbow in the sky, a reminder for God and humans alike. Symbols and signs, they can be powerful. They can be something that people rally around, something that motivates, something that brings a sense of hope and peace. Symbols and signs can be like a calling card for individuals or groups. They can bring status. They can say something about you as a person. And they can also be something that only makes sense to you or to a small group. So back on my deployment, I made hot beverage mugs for myself and my religious affairs NCO that had the Star Wars rebel symbol on it and our made up call signs Rogue One and Rogue Two. It was something that we did for our team, something that we understood, something that, you know, bonded us. And you know what? No one else had to get it because we knew what it meant. Signs and symbols have been used for centuries as a way of communicating with others. And you know, it, it's really easy to get sick down rabbit holes of researching the meaning of all sorts of symbols because there are so many. And I asked our staff members what were symbols or signs of something that brought hope to them. You know, trying to get a sense of what other people see. And I received a myriad of answers. Eagles, the cross, dragonflies, and the lit up hot Krispy Kreme donut sign. Because there are so many different signs and symbols, many different directions that we could go, we're gonna focus on the sign of hope from our focus text, the rainbow. Where do you see the rainbow as a sign of hope today? So I mentioned a couple of television shows that prominently featured the rainbow. You got the Care Bears, Rainbow Bright, and there's Reading Rainbow, My Little Pony, rainbows and unicorns and glitter and fairies, and all of those things, they're often seen together and as something that brings happiness and joy. Other ways that rainbows are used, babies who are born after parents have experienced an infant loss are called rainbow babies. The rainbows that come after the storm. Those who have lost pets will sometimes say that their pet went over the rainbow bridge. Rainbows are a sign of inclusivity and diversity and used in the LGBTQ community. In many cultures, rainbows are seen as a link between the earth and the heavens. In Irish legends, there's a pot of gold buried at the end of the rainbow. And for Christians, rainbows are the promise that better times will come, that there's life and hope after a storm and that God loves God's creation so much that it will never again be destroyed by the flood. As we rephrase and renew our stories and understandings of how God works in our lives and in our world, I'm curious, what are the signs and symbols that bring you hope and meaning? And why do they bring you hope? If you want, go ahead and throw your answers in the comments. The answers may differ for all of you, and your signs and symbols of hope may also evolve over the years. Take dandelions, for example. So as a child, I loved them. I thought they were bright and pretty. I would weave them together to make crowns. I would make bouquets out of them. I would take the dandelions that went to seed and blow the seeds around and make a wish. And I couldn't understand why my parents didn't want me planting them with all of our other flowers because I thought, A, they're a flower. 
and B, they're all over our yard anyway, so what difference does it make? Well, as I grew up, I learned that many people don't actually like dandelions. They see them as weeds that take over the whole lawn and want to get rid of them. But I don't know, I guess I still see them as bright and pretty, even as an adult. But as an adult, I also see them as food for the bees. I see them as a sign of new life coming, a sign of hope and promise in the spring. The more that we live in the world, the more that our symbols and our signs end up taking on a deeper meaning to us because we do see God's work whether we recognize it as God's work or not. And we go through things in life that cause us to rely more on these signs and symbols of hope. And then we also start to answer the why questions. Why does this thing bring me hope? Why am I drawn to it? There's a certain sense of beauty and wonder in all of these different symbols and signs in the world that show God's work in it, that give us that feeling of peace and hope. But it's also important to recognize that something that's a symbol or sign of hope for one person might be a trigger of despair or anger or something that's not super pleasant for another person. And we don't get to gatekeep what causes trauma for one person, just as we don't get to gatekeep what brings another hope. However, we can be good humans in recognizing that we have our differences. And just because it's meaningful for you doesn't necessarily mean it's meaningful for another person and vice versa. Or just because it hurts one person doesn't mean it hurts another and vice versa. But we have to recognize that, you know, these symbols and signs do have meanings, both good and bad for people. You know, one way that we can share these differences, that we can speak out loud and let others know is if we feel comfortable sharing, you know, share why does this thing or this item this song this person bring you hope why does this help you remember god's love for you or why does it not why is it triggering for you is it like a dandelion growing after a long hard winter reminding you that spring is coming and new life is here or is it a weed an obnoxious weed is it a rainbow after a storm or is it something else a symbol or a sign can also be very deeply personal to a person, and if you don't feel like sharing it with others, that's okay. But over the coming days, I encourage you to take a look at the world around you and ask yourself, what is it that brings me hope? And then dig a little deeper. Once you know the what, ask the why. Why does this bring me hope? Where's that coming from? And where do I see God in all of this? Where is God speaking to me in this sign? The good news of God is that we have signs of God's promise all around us if we care to look. You know, one way here We can look to the baptismal font, the place where we go and we receive the sign of the cross. We are told that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. We can look to the cross, the empty cross, the sign of Christ's victory over death and God's love for us. And if we happen to see the end of a storm, we can look into the sky after that storm, see that burst of color coming from above, that promise from God that there's always hope after a storm. Amen.
go ahead and dive deeper into the message this week with these reflection questions. The first, what are your signs or symbols of hope and promise? Why do they bring you hope? And where do you see God at work in them? And the second, how have your signs and symbols of hope and promise changed over the years? I wanna thank you for making time in your schedule to engage with Bethlehem today. If you found this video meaningful and you believe that your friends could find value in it as well, please share it with them. Giving this video a thumbs up and leaving an encouraging comment also helps this message reach more people. Bethlehem's ministry is sustained through your generous support. Thank you for making what we do together possible. Making time for intentional prayer is such an important part of our faith practice. If you have a prayer request that you wish to share with our community, please leave a public comment, send us a private message, or contact the church office. Each week, our staff and our congregation pray for those who have been named to us. And now please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your promise of love and compassion in our lives. Help us to name the things that bring us hope, to see them or experience them often, and to share hope and love with others in the world. Help us treat others with compassion and kindness and grace. Empower us to stand up for ourselves and for others. Be with those who are living in dark places, who struggle to have hope. Be with all who live with anxiety and depression and thoughts of suicide. Walk with those who are experiencing grief and help their grief be acknowledged and witnessed. Hear the names of those that we name in the silence of our hearts and those we name out loud, including Rosemary Benson, Mary Jo Buning, Betty Eastman, Peter Ede, Bill Gavin, Clara Jan Campa, Naomi Mahler, Gaylord Olson, Barb Cyrils, Mimi Swanson, Chuck Swenson, and Jolette Zass. Bring them healing even if they cannot be cured. We ask this all in Christ's name. Amen. Now, refreshed by our time of worship together and ready to re-engage with our community as the hands, feet, and heart of God, take this blessing with you. May Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you in God's grace today and always. Amen. Mm -hmm.